Are you new to writing literature reviews or do you struggle with the process? In this video, I interview Dr. Ian O'Byrne, an assistant professor from the College of Charleston, who's going to be discussing his article on eight steps to writing a literature review. His tips and his article can make the process go much smoothly, much more smoothly for you and help make your literature review a big success. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Hall from teachingacademia.com and I'm all about giving you the tools you need to navigate academia to make your best impact. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you get new notifications as I put out new videos every week. All right, so welcome everyone. I have with me today Dr. Ian O'Byrne. Ian is an assistant professor of literacy education at the College of Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina. Ian, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for being here. So Ian is here to talk to us about an article that he wrote, and I am going to pop it up on screen share, maybe, if I can, I don't know why, I just have the worst time with this today, on eight steps to writing a literature review. And what I thought would be really nice about this is I think your tips are really helpful for people that are brand new to the process, have never mm -hmm. done a literature review before, but also people that maybe just don't feel super confident about how to go about it. And so I thought we could talk about some of the common struggles people have, common questions we often hear, and your advice for how to make this a very useful, but hopefully kind of painless and somewhat enjoyable process. I try, I try. <laughs> so one of the things that I did was, I, I agree with you, one of the challenges that I had when I was in my own doctoral program, you know, even when I was working on my master's is, you know, I was, I was told by an instructor, by my advisor, or I would work on a publication or some research that would say, you need to write a literature review. And I was trying to figure out like, what is that? <laughs> um, and the interesting thing is that, you know, ultimately what would happen is, you know, my advisor or the class instructor would say, here is a literature review I wrote. Now you shall basically mimic this style that I had. Um, and so that's the way that I learned. Um, and then also one of the things that I've recognized is there's not like this, um, there's not freely available information to make sense of this. Um, so with this piece here, what I did was I, I'm starting up a new research project and I'm working with a, a couple of grad students, a couple of undergrads that I, that I work with, and I wanted them to do the literature review for me so that I can sort of mentor them in the process. But then at the same time, I'm also overseeing a lot of the research and the data collection. So we would have like one or two GAs that would be tasked with the literature review. And normally what would happen is I would put these directions in an email and send it to them or you know this long email and and my thinking is well why not share this openly online like why not instead of me putting this into an email and sending this to a GA or instead of me putting it in a Google Doc or a Word Doc and forwarding it to the GA um, there might be other people online that find value in this so why not just put it up on my blog send it out to medium elsewhere um, and so I, you know, and then I just link to it in the um, link to it in the email to the GA and say, here it is. And if there's changes to make, then I can make them and, and update it. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I that I also try to do in this is identify like the thought process or the, the processes involved in the literature review. Um, you'll notice that I talk a little bit about the, the tools, but I don't think the tools are very important because the tools should change. Um, they should change based upon the user, on your, uh, you know, the, the tools you already use. So as a background of this, this is all about how to write a literature review. Um, after this post came out, I sat down and I said, well, I skipped the process. I forgot about the annotated bibliography. So I have a post on that. Um, but then also as part of this, I'm working with the GAs and we said, okay, well, most of our workflow involves like Google Docs and Google Drive. And now what, in what ways do we annotate? Do we use Zotero? Do you use Paperpile? Like what tools do we use? So all of that dialogue can happen and it is happening, but then the bigger question, the thing that doesn't change is the process. So it was, it was important for me to lay out the process and say, this is what you should do in this. Um, and 
you know, not if, but when you have questions later on, you can come back to this blog post and say, okay, well, what were the directions here? What do I need to do? Yeah. And I mean, this, it's very clear in terms of, you know, the eight steps that, that you leave out. And I like at the top here, you talk about what it is, but you also talk about what it is not, mm -hmm. right? This idea that it is not an annotated bibliography. And this is something I've seen people that are new to writing literature review struggle with, where they conceptually understand it's not an annotated bibliography. Um, and of course, as you point out in here, and I think you're right, doing an annotated bibliography as part of the process can be very helpful. But at some point, you have to move past that. And you have to have, you know, clearly articulate whatever you found, whatever your argument is going to be for your literature review. So when people get stuck here with the, with the annotated part, do you have suggestions for how they might push past that? Yeah, and it's also, I mean, I think you learn more about the literature review. You learn more about something by thinking about what it is, but also thinking about what it is not. Mm -hmm. And so looking at the literature review and saying, okay, it is, you know, you might start with the annotated bibliography and then move into the literature review, but here's how they're connected. Here's how they're different. But please understand that the literature review um, should include some element of argumentation. You should be trying to make a point. The, the annotated bibliography is you're doing a survey of the landscape of the literature and figuring out what's out there. Um, you may or may not find holes in the literature, but I think with the literature review, there is an argumentative, or at least there should be an argumentative structure. You should be tactically looking online and figuring out, okay, well, what is, you know, what's the current research? What's the current state of the literature? And what are potential holes that my work either helps fill or ways why my work aligns with that? So there should be some tactical element, some argumentative structure to your lit review to say, here's how my work is situated within the other pieces of research out there. And there's a number, there's a number of reasons why you do that. Um, but I think it's important to understand that you need to do that to show that, to show how you, that you know the field and you can relate to the field and how you place yourself within the field. And I think that's where, you know, at the beginning when you talked about your professor giving you, you know, here's the lit review that I wrote, you know, there you go. Um, but that's a good place where then you can get examples from a professor that wrote and published a lit review or any number of literature reviews to sort of analyze how they go about that process, right? How do they go about pointing out the gaps? How do they go about making their arguments and their claims? How do they structure? That's where I think those pieces come in really handy. And, and, and we're in that earlier instance, you're missing all that. Mm -hmm. You're missing the looking at your, at your advisor or the professor's annotated bibliography or literature review. It's not contextualized at all. Like you don't know what that individual thought about or why there should be passion in research. There should be a reason why you conduct research. There should be passion and, and a reason why you write. And, and hopefully, um, you know, I was talking to a student yesterday that wants to do a, a research project and I, she came in and was like talking about all the different things she wants to do. And I said, hold on, stop. Like, why, mm -hmm. why are you doing this? Like, what, what's, the, what's the fire in your belly that makes you want to do this? And she's like, what does that mean? I'm like, well, why are you doing this? This is, this is a lot of work. <laughs> so you don't, we're not contextualizing for the students when they look at your copy of an annotated bibliography you wrote or one you found online. And it should start with at least the literature review. What's the question? What's the audience? Like, where is this going? Why? You know, what's the argumentation that you're trying to build into this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then oh, there was something, oh, I know, a question that I commonly get um, comes from this right here, where you suggest to, you know, you keep searching and researching the, and search, well, search and research the literature, right? You're going back and you're going back and you're going back. So I think a common question from beginners is, how do I know when I'm done? Yeah. And so I know how I would answer that, but how do you answer that? It, it reminds me a lot of, um, a lot of my research looks at online reading comprehension. You know, that's, I worked at the New Literacies Research Lab. I continue to look at the ways in which we read and write, communicate online. And so one of the things that we say when we look at a good online reader is that they, um, number one, that they can search and sift and synthesize. And we're talking about K-12, higher ed, but this is the ways in which we read online. 
So you can search and sift and synthesize. And you can also, um, you know what to ignore. Like what's in scope and what's out of scope. And, and, and basically what you're thinking about is like mental constructs. You're looking at all of the information and saying, this is the good stuff that fits what I need. And all of this stuff, other stuff is not important. And when we look online, you know, we see this stuff that's just extraneous information that you don't need or doesn't fit in. Um, and the last piece of that is knowing when you've answered that question or when you have enough an enough information to answer the question. So to me, the, the literature review, and to some extent the annotated bid, but the literature review is just a, it's a, a higher stakes version mm -hmm. of that, of those practices. Um, so all the same stuff that we want to see happen in our K-12 classroom, all of those same things you would have, you know, happen at higher stakes because a lot of this is going to impact your career, your employability, your ways in which you socialize and, and connect with the field. Um, so I, I think it's stuff that, it's stuff that we want to see in our K-12 and higher ed classrooms. Um, <laughs> Many times we don't see it, and that's part of the challenge. But I think that it's it's important to, to know when you have enough information. Um, the the way you do that here is, I think that you need to, um, you know, you need to go in and conduct your search. Um, I, you know, I believe it's okay. I know it's blasphemy, but I think it's okay to use tools like Google Scholar and and leverage those tools. I have my students use them. Um, I. I used them in my doctoral program, you know, and now you have my PhD, at least it's hanging up over there. Uh, you know, so I use those tools. So I think it's, it's going in and searching and changing your keywords and searching again. It's clicking through to like, if you're in a database or you're in Google, Google scholar, clicking to see what, okay, this publication who cited it, you know, or, you know, or, or you know, uh, go with, through and look at what other people that, use this as a citation, what do they talk about? Um, so I think it's really, it's almost like three or four waves of going in and searching, refining those keywords, synthesizing and going back in and refining keywords and, and looking at different angles of this um, and, and looking across different fields. Um, you know, when I first started my research agenda, there wasn't a lot of stuff in education or literacy that would connect to technology but there is a lot of stuff in communications, you know? Um, and then also now I see there's a lot of stuff in, um, you know, there's multiple facets of, of my research field, but you'll see stuff not only in communications, but you'll see stuff in like health literacy, mm -hmm. you know, and you wouldn't think that it would connect at all, but strangely there's a lot about this, these online technologies connecting over to like the health literacy. So it's, it's, you know, not, staying situated in like one field or one box it's looking out and exploring different angles and trying to figure out where those threads might connect and i think that's a really good suggestion to can especially to think outside the box of just using the the database at the library you know um like you talked about using google scholar and i've used google scholar i've gotten in and used research gates um and what that's done is when i get in and play around with keywords it's introduced me to people that I may not have found otherwise. So it has, even if they're in my field, I just may not have found them. And I, you know, so it's really helped broaden, I think my own understanding of the field by, by doing exactly what you said. And what um, I also do is um, when I lead students in my classes to conduct research, it's not to this extent, but what I do in my own practice is I feel like I need to go online and I need to learn a little bit before I start the search. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll do general web searches and I'll use a tool like hypothesis to mark up and just see what generally people are writing about and sort of like build background knowledge before I look at the research. Um, also, um, a tool like Wikipedia, you know, it, you know, I, I, my dissertation was in critical evaluation of online information. And so I've heard every rant about Wikipedia under the sun, but, I say Wikipedia is for me a good starting point. Wikipedia uh, many times is hard for me to read and understand and I am relatively well educated. Mm -hmm. I think that Wikipedia is a good place to start and say, okay, well, what are the general ideas? What are some of the names? Go down and look at the citations at the bottom. So a lot of times I, I do this in my own practice, but then I also have my students do it. 
go online and do general searches or read broadly to figure out, okay, what are some of the ideas and the keywords and the people? Go into Wikipedia, see what people are talking about, writing about, and then after you sort of understand the field a little bit, then dive in and do that, that literature review and start to search and see what the literature suggests. And I think, you know, you talk about tools, you have a section in here that I've currently got highlighted called take notes as you read, uh, you recommend some tools, but I like how you have this nice balance of be aware of the tools, be aware of a variety of tools, be open to them, but you, it's really about the process. It's not about the tool because any of these tools can come and go and they have come and gone, uh, you know, ever since we first started graduate school up until now, tools have changed. So it's part of being able to understand your own process is what I hear you saying as a scholar and then being able to articulate that. So you should be able to explain it reasonably well in your literature review, but you should also be able to, you know, sit in a class or sit around the table with other, you know, academics and be able to say, this is what I do. And yeah. you should be able to explain what you do and why you do it. Um, do you have any um, tools that you recommend are worth looking at, trying out if, for people? So um, I agree, the tools don't really matter. It's the process that's important. And one of the, the, the things to keep in mind is like, what tools are you comfortable with? Um, you know, what tools can you regularly use? So my, my challenge is, it, because oftentimes we look at a tool and we, we think about the affordances of the tool, and then we guide our work according to what the tool or the app will let us do. And so I've been through every, you know, our current challenge now is we are actively involved in this literature review. We're writing up the annotated bib and the lit review for publication. So we're actively in pursuit of this. And, you know, I, I've tried out all of the different iPad apps, you know, and, and different tools and, and I need, I need a system that has um, ubiquitous access to my data. I work at different places at different times. So I need a place that I can be at home or in, in my office or out in my, in my classroom and pull out my laptop. I need to be able to get to my work. I need it to be ubiquitous uh, so that my grad assistant and our research team, they can look at the data and the literature and make sense of it. Um, it has to be device agnostic. So I generally don't like diving into something that's like iPad only or Android only or Mac or, you know, I, I don't like that. Um, when I, uh, one of the things that I did not do that I wish I did was my advisor told me that I needed to start a system when I started my career. Um, and I dove in, I started to make sense of Zotero. I stopped after a while. Um, I started using Mendeley a lot. Mm -hmm. I ultimately was, and I think I still am like a Mendeley advisor. So I get all the free perks and I'm supposed to do Mendeley workshops. I ultimately stopped when they were purchased by Elsphere by the publisher, because I generally have a problem with stuff that's not open source. Um, and so now I'm trying to get myself back into using tools to connect others. Um, but what I've used in the past is uh, my writing process is all built on Google Docs. So everything happens in Google Docs and Google Apps. Um, and so then I can work on a publication or an annotated bib or a lit review in a Google Doc, quickly share it out to other people for feedback, quickly share it out so they can edit also. So it needs to live somewhere in a Google Doc. I don't use Microsoft Office at all. Um, I also, um, we're, we're trying right now, uh, I use Hypothesis in my classes and then also in my own practice to read and mark up and annotate online, but Hypothesis doesn't play well with um, citation management software like Zotero or Mendeley. It also doesn't play well with Google Docs, mm -hmm. so that is a hiccup. So we're trying to work our way around that with different tools. Um, we've looked at paper pile, but it's uh, three bucks a month and I prefer free. Free is a good price point. Um, so at, at this point, um, we've been investigating different tools and what we're doing is we're using a series of folders and uh, Google Docs uh, just to save all of these. We're saving PDFs in Google Doc full and drive folders. We're marking it up and annotating it over in, uh, you know, in one Google Doc with all of the, the APA citations and the notes and everything else. Um, my office has a giant whiteboard at all times um, so we can come in and we can stop everything and sort of 
draw out that that uh, that that nominological net that that you know list of the different constructs and how things fit in with each other. Um, I listed like Coggle or CMap there. So we either have some mind mapping tool or a whiteboard to jot things down. Um, but then also somewhere in my office I have, you know, we'll use stacks of index cards um, just to jot down ideas and get things out. So there's different tools, but you know, even, you know, I, I wrote this blog post. I've been trying to think about how to use this, but even my thoughts about the tools are often, um, they get me stuck. And so the challenge is, do I spend lots of time thinking about the tools or just get the work done? And then you get stuck. So at some point it's like, all right, let's just, let's do what we know. Let's save all the folders. Let's save all the PDFs in a drive folder or Dropbox. Um, let's mark them up and annotate them using some PDF editor or, or you know, highlighting tool. Um, and let's get that, that Google doc with the notes and start writing this thing out. Cause I think the tools are good, but we get so stuck in the tools and we almost get like hung up in the tools that at some point you just have to, you have to start it and, and work your way through. Right. Like you don't want to use the tools as a distraction for not getting your work done. Right. Yeah, Cause then you don't get anything done. And it's, you know, that's, that's the problem. Yep. Like I think we need to take time as academics, as researchers, as, as educators, we need to regularly take time and problematize our workflow. Like there are new ways to think about working, but it can't be the only thing that we do all of the time. Right. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Um, and so this is Dr. Ian O'Byrne, and he's got eight steps to write a literature review, which while they do talk a little bit about tools, they mostly these steps talk about the actual process beyond the tools that you can use that are going to make you really successful at writing your literature review. And we will put a link to this in the show notes so that um, you can access it. Ian, thank you so much. Thanks a ton. Uh, hopefully this helps out. Um, one of the things I end with on this is uh, please share. The reason why you have this and you're, you're reading it and using it is that I chose to share share your process, what works, what doesn't work, blog about it, do videos about it, respond to this video, um, you know, share, write blog posts, share your literature review. The world is a better place when we all share with each other. All right. Thanks, Ian. Thank you.